Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. And today I'm going to show you nine of my best picks for 35mm film cameras. Here in the UK they cost from only around £15 to about £150, so they needn't necessarily break the bank. There are range finders, there are point and shoots, and there are some SLRs too. So whatever you're looking for, there is something here for you. Now, I do love the ease of digital photography, but film is a very different experience. And if you haven't tried it, you should. It's a bit more fussy than digital, but it's simpler. Too. The image is made by light falling on this stuff on film. This is a sort of a plastic or gelatin uh, piece impregnated with silver halides. That is salts of silver. So that's the active ingredient that responds to light. The image is made just by light falling on that film. It's not processed, it's not turned into numbers, it's not sent through microprocessors, it's just light falling on film. And that image, the image that's made by the light on the film, that's the image you see and that's why film is beautiful. So the first camera I'd like to show you today is a rangefinder camera. It's a late 70s, early 80s camera, I think anyway, do correct me if I'm wrong. And it's the Yashica Electro 35 rangefinder camera. And this is one of the nicest looking cameras I've seen. I've not actually fully shot this camera yet. There is a film in it. Um, but I'm expecting some very, very nice results because it has this beautiful Yashinon DX f1.7 45 millimeter lens on it. So it's got a beautiful lens on it and I'm expecting some very nice results from this camera. Have a look. Uh, let's have a look more closely at it. And here is our Yashica Electro 35. It's a very groovy name as well. It's got it inscribed on the top there. There are all sorts of dials and lights and so on on the top deck and it looks pretty exciting. It's an auto exposure camera so it's very very simple to use. Rangefinder uh, cameras are pretty simple to use. You just look through the viewfinder here and turn the focusing ring and you'll see a split image in the viewfinder and when you've got that split image together that's when you know that you're in focus. So they're very, very simple to use and they're very good for street photography. A lot of street photographers use range finders. So the auto exposure feature on this camera really is a bonus. It's only auto exposure. There's no manual at all on it. But for me, that just makes things easier. It means that you don't have to mess about working out exposures and playing with light meters. So for me, that's a really good feature. You will need a battery adapter. You can't get the original batteries anymore, but there are battery adapters available. And there's a battery that just slips into that adapter. It's exactly the right voltage and off you go. A very nice camera, very simple to use with auto exposure and a great looking camera and a very, very nice lens as well. However, if you want to go simpler than this, it's a fairly simple camera anyway, but it is a 70s slash 80s camera. If you want to go simpler, you could try one of these. This is the Russian Fed Four, and this camera was made for many, many, many years. It's a development of the original Leica design from the 1930s. This is a sort of a Russian development of that design, and it still has 
lycra internals inside. Inside is the lycra cloth shutter mechanism. But there are some improvements. And the great thing about this camera is it's manual only. There's absolutely no auto settings on it at all. But the great thing is it has a light meter right on top of the top deck here. Let's have a quick look. So there's our light meter window and it's really easy just to read off your settings here and enter them into your camera, your aperture values and your ex uh, and your shutter speed values. Remember if you get one of these you must never set the shutter speed without winding on first. So we've just wound on and there we go. This is a nice camera. It's a very simple camera, um, but it's very well made. The Fed cameras were actually really well made. And this is the cheapest camera here. This camera sells for about £15 and it will accept any Leica lens, any L39 lens. At the moment, it's got an Indostar 61 on it, and that's a nice lens too. And I'm attached to this camera because this is the camera that I originally learned photography on. So it's a great tool for learning as well. If you want one, it will cost you around about £15 compared to around £70 to £100 for the more modern Yashica. If you want to go even more simple, you could try one of these. This is another rangefinder. This is the Zorki 1. And this is an interesting camera because this is a direct copy of the original Leica II of 1932. It's exactly the same. It's not quite as nicely finished, but it's a very good camera and it, and it is nicely finished in its own right. It has a collapsible, they come with a collapsible lens, the Indostar 22, which is a Tessar design and it collapses and you've then got a very very tiny camera the only thing about this camera is it doesn't have a light meter it's very small it's very portable and between you and me if you buy an original uh, Leica camera from the 1930s you'll probably find that the rangefinder patch is dim however if you buy a Zorki one or indeed a fed one there are fed cameras made like this as well, you'll find that the rangefinder patch, more likely than not, is very strong. They actually made better silver on their mirrors than the original Leica cameras. Otherwise, it's identical. It's got shutter speeds from 1 25th of a second to 1 500th of a second. And that's pretty much it. That's all you get. But it's a great little camera. Let's have a closer look so you can see just how much, uh, how like the original Leica it is. And there we are. There's the Zorki one. And it, you can see it's absolutely identical to the original Leica's. It's got the same design and it's it's an unabashed, unashamed copy there are two windows on it one for the rangefinder so you look through this one to focus to see the rangefinder and then you you look through this one to actually compose your shot when you focused so a lovely little camera very very simple again it will accept any l39 uh, thread mount lens so you can get loads of those from leica from the russian manufacturers uh, Canon, Reed, and many, many others as well. Lovely little camera. This camera cost me £40, and that is an absolute bargain. It's a beautiful little thing. It brings you the simple rangefinder experience very cheaply and very reliably and stylishly. Okay, the next camera I'm going to show you is a point and shoot. And it's this beautiful, tiny little thing, the Olympus Pen S. And this is a very, very small camera. It's, well, it's probably a mid to late 60s, maybe early to late 60s. 
design. It has auto exposure. It's got this selenium cell around here. Let's just have a quick look. And there's our lovely little Pen S camera. There's the selenium cell. That's what reads the actual light. Focusing is very simple. There are symbols on here for focusing. So focusing is no problem, just set to distant or near. There's a setting for portraits, so it's nice and easy to focus. This is a half frame camera. So what that means is it takes double the number of shots that an ordinary 35 mil um, film camera will do. So to take a landscape shot, you actually turn the camera this way and to take a portrait shot you turn the camera this way and this will give you 72 exposures on a roll of film which will only give you 36 in any of the standard 35mm cameras so the half frame is really a big advantage. There's a shot counter on here on the top deck uh, there's the shot counter and it's a very simple uh, camera to use. Just wind it on uh, using the wheel on the back here. And then you can take your shot. It's a very nice, quiet, silent shutter. And this is great for street photography as well because it's so small and it's almost unnoticeable and, uh, you know, nobody will object to you pointing this kind of camera at them. So a very, very nice little camera. These are available for around about, I don't know, I've seen them for 60, 70 pounds. I've also seen them for around about 100 pounds. But that's the kind of area that we're talking about. But it's well worth it. And don't forget. If you want to try film and you want to buy one of these cameras, they're not going to lose their value if you want to sell them on. These, these old cameras have a fixed value, unlike new ones. Now, a very similar camera to this one, and one which we have looked at in the past on this channel, is the Olympus Trip 30. Five, and that's a very, very similar camera, except this is an ordinary 35mm camera. It's not a half frame, it's a full frame. So you get 36 shots on a 36 exposure roll. Again, very similar. Let's have a look at both of them together and you can see the similarities. So they really are very, very similar things. They've both got that big electric eye selenium cell meter there they've both got a very similar winding mechanism just a wheel on the back there here it is on the trip 35 this one's been in the sun i think stored in the sun it's got a bit of a stain on it there from the sun but that's okay so a very similar camera except it's a full frame one and if you want that little bit of higher definition, then this is the camera for you. It's very simple focusing. Again, it's with symbols, um, automatic exposure and a really nice and a really popular camera. These again go for a similar price to the half frame camera there. I've seen these for around 60 to 70 pounds, but I've also seen them for around 100 or a little more as well. But well worth it if you want to try a little film or if you want a really nice snapshot film camera, this is a very nice one. Now my favourite point and shoot is just hiding behind the cameras here. Here it is. It's the Nikon L35AF and this is my favourite point and shoot. It's an absolutely beautiful camera. It does everything and it's got everything. It has automatic exposure. It has automatic film loading. It has automatic winding. 
It has automatic focus also, and it even has a little needle in the viewfinder to show you whether you're uh, near, focused near or far, so you can get a good idea what you're focused on. And it also has automatic film rewind, and it doesn't wind the leader all the way into the into the can. It leaves a little bit sticking out, so you can get it out for developing. If you do your own developing, which I do with black and white, you can see that this is a very small camera. There's no protruding lens on it. It's all built into the body. The lens is a 35 millimeter f 2.8 lens. And this will accept films from 100 ISO up to 400, but there are models of this camera that will go up to 1000 ISO also. It's got a built-in flash. It's got groovy 80s design with this red stripe here. Um, the back is very simple. It's just a viewfinder there to look through. The top deck also is very simple. Uh, with an on off button here it takes two double a batteries so there's no problem getting batteries for it this lens is wonderful because you can mount a filter on it it's actually got a filter mount on this lens and it's a very very sharp lens too my favorite points and shoot they're not cheap they go from around 100 pounds to 150 pounds but they're very very well worth it if you want a point and shoot that can do the lot reliable autofocus time after time reliable auto exposure time after time auto film wind and a very very nice lens too then this is the camera for you in my opinion, you can't do better than this one for a film point and shoot. So let's have a look at some SLR cameras. Now, and the first one I'm going to show you is a late 80s SLR. It doesn't have the classic traditional SLR look. Well, not quite. It's got a rather, what was at the time anyway, a rather futuristic, very, very modern look. Now this is a great little camera. It's auto exposure, auto wind, and it accepts all of the beautiful Canon FD lenses. Let's just have a closer look at this camera. And there it is in all its 80s wondrousness. And you can see how the designers have attempted to change from that very traditional SLR look that we all know and they've produced something that looked rather futuristic at the time and still looks pretty good now in my view. It's got this good grip here so that you can hold it very easily. The shutter button is very simply placed and if we look on the top deck there's an LCD screen which when you switch it on gives you all the exposure information that you need. This is a very simple camera to use and it's a really good camera as well. It benefits from all the improvements that happened over the years and in a sense this is a state-of-the-art SLR. It's not the uh, top model of the time. That honour went to the T90 which was a spectacularly large but spectacularly capable beast. This is a slightly lesser one this was the consumer model as i say it doesn't have those classic looks but don't discount it these cameras are available very very cheaply i bought this one can you believe it with a 50 millimeter this film 50 millimeter f 1.4 lens for 26 pounds so the bargains are out there these are very very cheap cameras and you can find very cheap ones if you're patient and if you look regularly. It takes ordinary AA batteries, so there's no problem with batteries, no, um, you know, no hard to get lithium batteries dying or anything like that. You can get batteries for this anywhere in the world, so there's no problem keeping it going should the electronic supply, should the electric supply fail, um, the batteries fail rather a very very nice little camera very cheap 
and well worth considering if you're looking for an SLR. Okay, the next SLR we're going to look at is this one. This is the Minolta XG1. This is a lovely little camera. It's a very conventional SLR. It's got the classic SLR look. This one, I think, is a late 80s one or maybe a mid to early 80s camera. It's still got the classic styling, if that's your thing. These are available quite cheaply. Uh, I bought this one for £35 with this fantastic f2 50mm, I think it's 50, yeah 50mm Minolta lens and Minolta lenses are beautiful, there's no other word for it. They have fantastic colours, they're sharp, they have beautiful blur and uh, I think the main feature on these lenses is the colours. They're just fantastic for colour representation. And F2 will give you all the blur you need. Let's have a quick closer look at this one so you can see what it looks like. If we can get some focus, there we go. And you can see that it's a, a very conventional, traditional looking SLR. There's the top deck with the shutter dial. Nice and easy to use. An on off switch here. So switch it on. And we can then shoot the camera. The shutter button is right there, just handy where you need it. It's got a fairly loud shutter sound as most SLRs do, but that's because they have a big mirror inside that has to lift up and get out of the way so that the light can get to the film. When you look through an SLR, you're looking through a prism which brings the light from the lens onto a mirror at, whoops, and shoots it up to your eyes. So you're looking directly through the lens on an SLR. That's not the case with point and shoot or a rangefinder. But with an SLR, you look directly through the lens. So what you see is exactly what you get. This is a lovely little camera and it's very inexpensive as well. I just bought this one for £35. Did I already say that? Well then, I've, if I did, I've said it twice, which makes it even more true. Very cheap, very nice little camera and beautiful, beautiful lenses. This will accept any Minolta lens from, gosh, I don't know, the early 60s, right up until the 90s. They, they didn't change their mount, it stayed the same. So there are hundreds and hundreds of lenses to choose from. A very, very nice little camera, well worth a look. Finally, in our SLR category, let's bring out the Beast. This is the Nikon F. M and I call it the beast because it's big and heavy. It's a big, heavy camera. It's an all manual camera. And this is a camera, this is one of those cameras that has everything you need and nothing that you don't need. It's really, really simple. It's all manual. It's got a winder lever, a shutter button. Let's have a closer look, in fact. So there's the top deck, as I say, a winder lever, a shutter button, um, the ISO and shutter speed control is here and the film rewind is here. It's a really simple camera to use. It takes all the fantastic Nikon lenses. This one at the moment, I think, has a 50mm on it. Yeah, 50mm f1.4 is on here at the moment. That's a beautiful lens. There's those Nikon coatings glinting in the light. And it's those coatings that give those lenses the Nikon colour palette, which I really love. It's a little different to all the lenses. It seems to emphasise reds and greens at the expense of blue and it gives a very individual very unique color signature which i like very much and there are loads of wonderful lenses for this camera i've got a beautiful 80 mil f2 that i use on this one 
Um, I've got the 43 to 86 zoom, which I use on this one. And I've also got a Series E lens. The Nikon Series E lenses are also very capable. In the viewfinder, there is a meter which uh, tells you if you're under or over exposed. So all you do while, while you're looking through the viewfinder is just simply change the settings as you're looking through the viewfinder and the meter will tell you whether you've got the right exposure or not. Beautifully, beautifully simple, beautifully made. This thing is a tank. I, I get the feeling it will never wear out. It, it, it's just so well made. Obviously, it's a machine and machines can develop faults, but this seems one that's unlikely to develop faults, especially as it's all manual. It's got no electronics apart from the meter. And even if the meter fails, you can use uh, an outside handheld meter with this one or just use Sony 16. A beautiful machine everything you need, nothing you don't. If you want to get a bit fancier, you can get the Nikon FE, which is the same camera with built-in aperture priority auto exposure. And I must say, I do enjoy using this camera as well. The top plate is very similar, I'll show you. So you can see that the top plate is very similar, except that this one has an auto setting. Put it to auto, you're then in aperture priority auto exposure. And this is a great camera. If you like auto exposure, if you don't want to bother with manual, then this is a great camera uh, for that kind of use. And of course, you can use it in manual as well. Beautiful little camera in its own right. But honestly, I think I prefer the FM. There's just something nicer about the simplicity of this machine. You're more in contact with the image. You're more, you feel more in contact with the light and the image and with what you're doing. Absolutely lovely little machines. So that's my nine best picks for film cameras. Coming up soon, well, Let's have a look into the Xenography crystal ball and see what we can see. And I can see coming up, I can see one of these. The Fujifilm X-T3 and it's just arrived today. I've not even taken, out, taken it out of its box. I'm very, very excited to shoot this camera. I'll be doing a full review on this camera very, very soon. And I really can't wait to go out and shoot it. We're also going to have a review of, full review of this camera, the Electro 35, Yashica Electro 35 with that beautiful f 1.7 lens. And we've also got an episode with a whole bunch of nice new vintage lenses coming up, including this one, the Maya Optic Lidith, which is a surprisingly nice, very cheap lens. It is a, I think it's a 30 millimeter. Yeah, it's a, it's an F3.5 30 millimeter. And I'll be showing you very soon the results of this lens. Let me know what you'd like to see in the comments box below, which one you'd like to see first and the most popular one gets made first. Just let me know in the comments box below. So that's it from me for this week. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you'd like to support it, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography and you can do it for as little as one dollar per month. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time for some more xenography.